Hello, welcome to Rational Investing. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. Thank you very much for watching the channel, all the comments and subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't already. Really appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, this channel is dedicated to the rational investor, the one that's looking for cash flow, hard cash money. That's how we evaluate stocks. How much free cash flow do they have? We look out in the future and to see how much free cash flow they can generate in the future. And if they do that, what is the stock worth? This week up, we're going to look at Lockheed Martin, the behemoth in the defense industry. We're going to figure out how much hard cash money it makes and how much we can earn by holding the stock. You ready? Let's get to work. Okay, we're going to dive right into Lockheed Martin here, and I want to remind everyone to read the 10K. It's where all the factual information on the company is, all the risk disclosure, and actually the management explains what happened year over year in much greater detail than they do in their annual, excuse me, in the earnings release. So definitely check that out. Now, this channel, obviously, we focus on the five key factors, and you're not going to see me have bulls and bears dance across the screen. That's not this kind of show. We don't trade. We are long term investors. I hope you're owning these stocks for at least a decade when you buy them. Let's review the five key factors that we use here in this channel. Number one, top line revenue growth. It's gotta be growing. You gotta be, have to be able to grow the top line. Number two, EBITDA, enterprise level earnings, they must be growing. Number three, strong free cash flow. That's obviously the source of the channel. That's what we want. Uh, number four, low debt. They have to have less than three times debt to EBITDA. And number five, they need to be well-priced. What is well-priced? Well, a well-priced security to us is a stock that, when we look at a conservative forecast over a decade period of time, produces an above-market return, or at least is expected to produce above-market. That is how we classify well, well-priced. All right, let's dive right into uh, Lockheed Martin. All right, let's dive right into revenue for Lockheed Martin. Uh, $45 billion, December 31st, 2013 was the number, and it fell right out of the gate, uh, but it recovered. Now, it took several years, and you might, have, you might be in a company for many, many years before it can recover. That's the nature of investing, and don't think that every year the number needs to be going north. Uh, it's nice when it happens, but it's rare. So it, it, it rebounds and then continues to grow, to finishing the year at $76 billion dollars. Uh, in 2021. EBITDA does kind of the same thing, 3.4, kind of flat-ish, and then eventually grows to, uh, to $9 billion. Again, slight down here, $9 billion over that period of time. But it's nice that the, both the revenue is growing, growing at 5% annual rate, and EBITDA is growing at a 7% annual rate. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at debt, and we're going to look at short-term and long-term debt, bond obligations, and you want capital leases as well. You don't not concerned with payroll or tax liability uh, necessarily. These are obligations that could cause the risk of bankruptcy. They started at six billion dollars, and it's gone to thirteen billion. That's a doubling over that time. Looks like earnings have almost doubled. Uh, so in terms of a ratio, that looks pretty good to me. But overall, $13 billion on debt over this uh, decade period of time. Market cap, market cap is shares outstanding times the average price in the fiscal year. That's how I use it. So a December average share, average price times share. $48 billion, $49 billion to essentially $100 billion. Looking here the last several years, it, the market cap really hasn't moved. Uh, enterprise value, enterprise value is the addition of these two, and the stock doesn't appear to have any excess cash that would reduce the, the enterprise value. Now we get to our metrics in the end. I'll take the far one first. Net debt to EBITDA, that's obviously how we measure how much debt they have. You measure debt relative to how much earnings they make because it's earnings that pay for debt. And what we can see is it's roughly one to two times debt at the high end, but they quickly paid it down, which is what we want to see. So this checks the box for us. It's averaging less than three, it's currently less than three, and it looks like it's on its way down, which is nice to see that. Enterprise value to EBITDA, this is a relative value measure that looks at enterprise value, the total value of the company, against the earnings that it makes on an annual basis. And you want a company that is either growing super fast and or at a reasonable, uh, a market multiple of enterprise value to EBITDA. This is essentially a payback period. How many years is of, of earnings is it going to take for the business to earn its weight in, uh, in the enterprise? And it's a measure that's often followed in investment bank and in private equity. They look at the multiple of earnings as a gauge for how expensive a company might be. And over this uh, nine-year period of time, you can see that um, it trades in a range. 
uh, Lockheed Martin will go from 10 times to maybe a high of 16 times and back down. It's somewhat range bound, right? It's not, it's not a rocket ship. It's not growing, no pun intended. Uh, it's not growing exponentially as a company. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mature business. So you'd expect its enterprise value to EBITDA, its, its market multi multiple to be range bound. And it totally is. Right now it's sitting at around 12 and a half. It's actually 13 and a half right now. It's kind of shot up after the fiscal year with the, with the issues going on in Ukraine. So I think it's kind of right in the mid range of its valuation at this point, 13 times. But you can see that's the range bound. Let's take a look at cash flow. <clears throat> now, before we begin cash flow, I do want to remind you, I do teach a course at cashflowinvestingpro.com. Check it out. I teach you how to be a financial analyst. I give you this Excel template and I walk you through how to do these numbers. But uh, enough of that. Let's get back to uh, cash flow calculations itself. So CFO cash flow from operation, that's the first third of the cash flow statement. That's the one that is how much cash money do they make running their business? Uh, in this case, being in the defense business, how much cash do they make from doing that? Well, $4.5 billion to $9.2 billion, a growth rate of 9%. And what you'll notice is this growth rate is very similar to the growth rate of the, on the EBITDA at 7%. So that to me means that the accounting department is expensing the P&L costs appropriately to, that are lining up to the cash cost. And that's a good sign. If they're moving in opposite directions, that's an that's a indicator that some, uh, some people can be monkeying with the accounting numbers. But I, I do like that. I also like here that the loss or the reduction in EBITDA that we saw here last year from 10 to 9 declined, but cash flow went up. So that tells me that this, this decline here was a non-cash item, which might be one time in nature and gives me comfort that this number is going to continue to bounce, that's going to bounce back next year. CapEx here, CapEx is how much money they put back in their business on an ongoing basis. So that, that's to, to maintain factories, to build that new equipment machinery, they have to put up CapEx. And what this is telling me is that they generated $9.2 billion um, in the business of running the defense industry. You look at the next middle section of the cash flow statement, it's the cash flow investing. So it's like, what are they doing with their money? Well, some of it, some of that section is going to property, plant, and equipment. That is this thing, $1.5 billion. I look at the t difference between these two, and that's cash that's available to us, equity owners, or to pay down debt. The nice thing is they have so little debt that the debt payments are very, very small. So with the $9 billion, you minus $1.5 billion, that's like $8.8 .8 billion, um, minus the uh, five hundred grand gives you about $7.2 yeah, $7 billion dollars of cash, that cash is available to you and to me as stockholders. That's what that cash is for. And if you put it on a per share base, if I take shares, 277 million shares, and I divide the two, 7.2 .2 billion divided by 277 million shares, I get $25.95. This is the cash that the stock price is based on this cash and what we as investors project this cash to be in the future. That's it. That's what a stock price is valued. A stock is only worth the future stream of cash flow. And anything else above that is speculation. Uh, all the, the daily movements back and forth is people arguing over what that future stream is going to look like. That's essentially what the stock market is. It's reduced down to one number and the projection of this one number. That's it. But what we can learn here, and what I like here, is that you're going to see the shares. Uh, what, what, what is Lockheed doing with their uh, free cash flow? Well, they're buying back shares. They're paying dividends, and they're buying back shares. And you can see 327 million shares outstanding has come down uh, to 277 million shares outstanding. That is fantastic. Uh, and that's actually one, one of the reasons why I wore this shirt, the trifecta t-shirt today. It's a term I've coined for investing. It stands for earnings growth, which is EBITDA in our case. It stands for market multiple expansion. So it's a stock that's in this case going to go from 12 to 15 times EBITDA and it's share buybacks. Those three things combine to produce hockey shaped curves when you look at the stock performance because of the compound nature of all of those. Earnings growth is nice, but it's linear. When you comp compound earnings growth with a market multiple expansion and fewer shares outstanding it means that you own a greater percentage of that, of that gain, that produces an exponential curve. That's what we want in this channel. 
This here is an indicator that the company is doing one of these things very, very well. They are buying back shares. They are not leveraging themselves. Debt's coming down, actually. So they have plenty of cash to pay down debt, to buy back shares. Uh, their earnings are growing. We see both cash flow and, uh, and, and uh, EBITDA growing over time. The question is, what is the market multiple and can it expand? We'll cover that in a little bit. <clears throat> cash flow per share. Pricing now, price has been very high recently. It's 355 at the end of the fiscal year. It's now four and change, 440, I think. Um, at the so that that's a big, big move up. And if I put this on a yield, this is basically just say, taking this free cash flow and dividing it by here. I think the end of the fiscal year was a heck of a buy for this company. It's seven seven percent of a yield is amazing. It's probably high. I think it's in the fours right now, so it's come up a lot. Uh, but uh, that's that's cash flow. All right, let's take a look at a forecast and figure out what we think this number here is going to be in the future. We'll also do it on EBITDA basis as well. All right, before we get into the forecast, I want to remind you about the Cash Flow Club, where I publish one pagers like this one on Lockheed on a whole host of stocks, not just Lockheed, but I try to get out at least a dozen a month. I'm also hiring new analysts that help publish more of these every single month and get a community around one pagers. And what do you get in this one pagers? Well, you get 10 years of financial information. You get a very fast five key factors summary right there. You get the entire forecast explained to you, figure out what you believe in, if you can see the numbers behind it, and you get a summary and a chart. That's the Cash Flow Club. Definitely check that out. All right, let's look at the EBITDA forecast. So EBITDA, uh, I've got $9.6 billion. I'm using the 7, 6.8% growth rate that they have experienced historically, and I'm running that out. And I get 9.6 up to 17.3, 17.4 billion dollars. I'm applying a 13 times handle on that number, right? So that number is slightly higher than where it was historically. So had you bought it then, you'd get a slight market multiple expansion. At its current price, however, I think it's trading roughly at 13, 13 and a half change. So there's really no market multiple expansion buying it currently. But if I take 13 times this number, I get $226 billion of enterprise value. I remove some debt. There's no cash to add back. And I get $200 million market cap out 10 years from now. Divide by the shares I stand, I get $724 and change for a future stock price of Lockheed Martin. Now, the same thing can be done for the cash flow. And remember, we pick up the $25 number that we had before. Grow that at 6.8%. I get $27.72. I continue that growth rate. I'm targeting $50 per share of free cash flow out a decade from now. If I put a very modest yield on it, 6.5%, I get $770.84 of a long-term price target for Lockheed Martin based on the free cash flow that it's generating. Okay, now the fun part, the return. Now, what do we have? We have two different valuation methods. We have free cash flow per share, $770 per share, and I have an EBITDA market multiple method of $724 a share. I don't know which one to believe, it's out 10 years. It doesn't really matter. It's all a price estimate anyways. I'm going to split them 50-50 and I'll get $747 per share. Now, and after we've formed an opinion of what we think the stock is worth, now do we look into the stock market to see what the price is. And I want to encourage you guys to do this. Never, never, never look at the stock price in the stock market before you re re review a stock. I highly encourage you, pick up the 10Ks, read a company, come up with your own valuation in the business, and then look at the stock market to find the information. That way you would have assessed a clear and clean vision for the company, for yourself, and then you can check it with the reality of what's on the ground. Uh, $444 is the stock price. I can buy as much stock as I want at that price. So that's not quite a doubling in the stock market. Let's put it into an IRR and we'll figure out how much it's worth. Okay, now the fun part. Um, I take the cash flow that's going to generate, which is which is decently strong, against buying the shares at 440, selling at 747 dollars, and I get a 14 percent return. That's a strong return for a defense company with a bright future, and I really like that. It's also based strongly on really decent cash flow and not so much price appreciation. The price appreciation is there, which is great. But really, this strong free cash flow means they can make acquisitions, they can buy back shares, and they can uh, pay dividends, all of which are, are accretive to us if they're doing it right. So here's a sensitivity table. If the stock were to move up or down from here, right? I'm filming the 
I'm recording this now. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But if the stock comes down in price, I think it's definitely a buy. And it falls in the trifecta range, right, where you get a market multiple less than average, and it can come back, and you get that compounding effect. As the stock rises, I would hold off and wait for a better price in the stock. I think it's a little rich. So we're kind of right in this gray zone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a rating right now. We're going to give it a good rating because let's review the top, let's review the five key factors. Number one, top line revenue growth. Yes, it's growing. Number two, earnings growth. EBITDA is growing. Number three, strong free cash flow. Absolutely. That's very, very strong. L number four, 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 low debt. Yes, low debt. And number five, it's well priced. Given the fact it's going to produce a 14, estimated to produce a 14% IRR, that's a market beating return. It's something I would hold in the portfolio if you like this kind of stock. Take a, take a look, take a consideration. Now, what I want to tell you guys is if you liked this analysis, definitely check out my website, cashflowinvestingpro.com. Learn to become an analyst. Take my financial course. Lots of people have. It's been a game changer for many, many people. Right now, today is an amazing time to be a securities analysis. The stock market itself is whipsawing back and forth, and having the ability to underwrite an individual investment is becoming critical, and you should learn how to do that. I teach a course, it's simple, it's about three hours worth of lecturing, and it'll tell you exactly how to become a financial analyst. I give you this Excel template, I show you how to read 10Ks, uh, I walk you through how to create a forecast, how to build a focused portfolio, and hopefully will help you go where you wanna go financially. I really, really mean that. Thank you for watching this video. Please comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Throw a comment down below. Uh, there's a lot of phenomenal value hunters offering stocks down below, often commentary. And let me know what you think of this video. If I'm over or undervalued, if you think it's a trifecta, just shout out trifecta. Uh, let me see what you guys think. I really appreciate the time. Uh, more videos are gonna come up on the side here. If you wanna see other value hunting videos, please check those out. Again, my name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. Thank you very much for watching the channel. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.